There they go. As the racers are now out on the course, the spectators begin their own race to find different parts of the course here at Glendevere Golf Course to watch. And you can just see what oh, the rain gosh. has now done to the conditions here in the opening 100 meters of this race. And, you know, again, to get out there in the front of the pack advantages you because you don't have to face not only the splashes, yeah. but the splashes from the groups in front of you. And hopefully then you can kind of choose a more clear path as well. Maybe not go straight through the middle of the puddle. Maybe go a little bit around the edge. And just coming into picture now and grabbing the lead as she has done in her previous trips around this five kilometer course, Caitlin Tui to the lead. Wasting no time. Now, last year we saw at this point right here, she was already beginning to gap the field a little bit more, even this early into the race. So it's not quite as much. Again, part of the field is so strong, but at the same time, she wanted to be a bit more careful and not be overly aggressive at the start. This is a huge race and obviously a ton of people out here. I think it would be really easy to just let the adrenaline get to you and, and get out kind of aggressively like she did last year. I could easily see that, how that would happen. Well, this is her fifth appearance at Nike Cross National. Started as an eighth grader when she finished 49th and then 13th as a freshman and turned that experience into successful trips to the finish line in 2017 and 2018 as she broke the course record again last year. The group that follows her Staying within a few strides of her as we near the two-minute mark early oh. in the race. And we already oh. have one of our first athletes down. And that can be dangerous not only for her, but also the athletes behind her. But it looks like she was able to get up and is back on her two feet. Caitlin Hart wearing bib number 19 and center of picture, one of the top individuals out of the Midwest region, four-time Illinois 3A state champion, was fourth at NXN back in 2017. Disappointing finish last year, finishing in 16th position. Would like nothing more to come back and have a strong performance here in 2019. Also, Sydney Thorvaldson among the leaders here early on in the race as we get a good shot of them coming to the next good spectator position. As Tui continues to lead. See also up front, I believe in fourth place currently, is Taylor Eward out of Ohio, out of Beaver Creek. She's one of the main contenders coming in. Again, a record holder in the race walk as well. 1,500 to the 20K. Yeah, I talked to, to Taylor um, yesterday, and, you know, one of their teammates was in a boot when they were walking around the, the team hospitality. So I feel like she really wants to do well to lead her team and try and make up for that difference for a, a woman down uh, in their squad. Well, a little bit more of a race here early on in the 2019 edition of the Nike Cross Nationals. And Caitlin Tui still in the lead ahead of Sydney Thorvaldson. As let's go head out onto the course now and check in with our Chris Derrick. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Sydney Torlson is really up for this. She went out really hard in her regional race, and she's mashing that today. I'm also really impressed, impressed by Claire Walters in third from Manlius. She's, of course, the most familiar with Caitlin Tui, having raced her multiple times and in her state. Back up, back up, the, back up. the course out here is treacherous. I nearly fell walking over to the start line. <laughs> There's just a lot of really loose topsoil. So hopefully our favorites here can stay on their feet. And I also see Marley Starlipper now is starting to move up. She was maybe our second favorite. She's getting back into contact with Caitlin Tui, who's going to have a lot more company than she's used to here at this race. And usually we don't see Caitlin throwing a look this early I into a race. That. Wow. And I'm wondering what her thoughts were when she turned around and there was people right behind her. Yeah, I've no, I don't think I've ever seen her do that. Look over her shoulder like that with, you know, four mm -hmm. minutes into the race. When you're chasing someone, that really helps. When they're looking back at you, mm. you know that, that basically you're on their mind. Yeah. Right, now I wonder if she's going to start pouring on <laughs> a little more speed now. Does that worry her, or is she just, you know, keeping track? Throws off the gloves and gets right yeah, down to it. Like, All right. <laughs>
And again, from the regional meets, I would say the one that probably had the most impressive performance at the regional meet was Thor Boltzen in the Northwest Regional when she blew away the, uh, the course record there. I love how these girls are not afraid of Caitlin Tui. I mean, they're just right <laughs> after point. her. Yep. That's impressive that they know her stats. They know she's the course record holder. They know she dominates every race. But they're not letting that scare her, um, especially with some crazy uh, course conditions out here. It's really impressive that they've come out ready to, ready to play. Right, yep. Five seconds out. It looks like the course conditions have significantly worsened since I was out there for the boys race. The puddles are now lakes. Um, there's, yeah, this is just amazing. I personally have never raced in conditions like this. I can't imagine. Um, my feet get wet when I steeplechase, but then they dry out fairly quickly as I'm going around the track. These girls' shoes must just be absolute puddles. Behind Hart, or excuse me, behind Tui. A strong group in that top 10 position. Saw Fiona Max from Central Oregon trying to be strong for her team's goal of repeating as champion. She came through in eighth position. Star Lipper in the top five. We talked about her in the preview of the broadcast as well. But you can see a little bit of separation now from that top five group and the rest of the field in the top 10. And also very interesting team-wise at that first mile split on the scoring Two New York teams on top. Kinetic currently in the lead at 244 over Manly is in second at 263. Then a big gap of over 100 points to third. Our defending champion, Central Oregon. We'll put those leaders on the screen for you and cycle through back to the uh, top seven here in a moment. This at the one mile mark. And just as we note here, on the team side, at the individual side, Caitlin Tui now seems to have extended her lead slightly over the rest of the field. Torvaldson now got a little bit of company here, battling for that second position. Taylor Ewart in the Ewart rather in the blue, and then Claire Walters of Manlius now moving up into that second position. And right here, down pack, this is basically where the, where the championship is decided. We have a situation in cross country, our sports like no other. We have the front runners who get the headlines, but it's uh, your three and especially your four, your four and five scorers. Those are the ones that determine the team championship. Those are the unsung heroes that really close the door in getting those titles. Star Lipper there, last in that group of four. Again, these the four women behind Caitlin Tui, who still has the lead. Chris Derrick, conditions are deteriorating with every kilometer. What do you see out there? I was going to come to you with a comment that uh, one of the coaches had just yelled to this, this group before that Caitlin was looking tired. She was vulnerable. Time to seize the moment. But just after that, she really stepped on the gas. Torvaldson, uh, she is fading a little bit as she did a little bit at her regional. She does like to go out really hard. Star Lipper has not really touched the front of this group at all. So she could possibly be ready to launch herself from here. And I think Fiona Max for Central Oregon is a little closer to Claire Walters than I would have expected. It's interesting. We know that coming in, Tui is, has the best strength of the runners in the field. So this kind of Petra's condition could play in her favor. And she was more conservative early on. Now she's trying to drop the hammer. It's pretty impressive that Kinetic already has 20 points um, in the lead. Their coach had said that they prefer to go out a little more conservative side um, and then really, you know, have a strong finish. But they're obviously um, already got a good lead. So if they continue to do that and, and finish even stronger, they will handedly take the win. Well, and again, a reminder, it was just a second difference between Caitlin Tui and the rest of the field at the one mile mark and she is using this second mile to create some separation for that from that group though they are still within striking distance here as the remainder of the field works their way down near the 10 minute mark gets to the rise here on the race course where very much will follow the race for the team championship with a couple of former champions at the one mile mark with the top two positions in Kinetic and Manlius and last year's champion Central Oregon in third.
And appearance-wise, this is the Caitlyn Tui we're used to, the nice, strong, powerful strides. But the interesting thing is, these trailing four here, they're all still looking pretty strong. They're not really falling apart. In the past, we've seen individuals that really begin to implode once, the, once she puts the pedal to the metal. Right here, these girls are hanging tough, still running strong individual races among themselves. Yeah, Taylor Ewart looks really good. She just looks strong. Um, she has that look of determination on her face that is relaxed, where you can see her face looks relaxed, but also is very focused. Well, a lot of decisions upcoming for Caitlin Tui, not the least of which is her college choice. Colleen, you tried to get a little insider knowledge, but uh, at this point, I, news, I, news to come at her decision time. I was time. trying. She said top three, and I said, okay, what are the three? She said, nope. Not telling you. <laughs> we were trying to get it out of her, but um, I think she's having a little bit of fun with the reveal, possibly, and, and building that anticipation. So um, I said, good for you. And I said, anything that you know you do or don't want to be asked if I get to interview after? And she said, don't ask about college. <laughs> I made her a promise. So if I see her later, we will have to think about something else to talk about. Well, a lot of these uh, young women will be stepping up to the next level here very soon as uh, a lot of decisions are being made in the recruiting season ahead for the class of 2024 at the collegiate level. And Caitlin Tui now focused on what is ahead of her over the last kilometer and a half, which is trying to come to the finish line and become the first to ever win three Nike Cross National titles. Chris Derrick, what do you got for us? Well, Caitlin looks really great. I think she attacked the field or, or made another move on the field right when the course was getting tough, and she's really widened up that gap. I think Taylor Ewart realized there in the last kilometer that if she wants to have a chance to win her first national title, she was going to have to try to break away from that group of four. But at this point, Caitlin looks phenomenal, and the, the turnover and a stride length really hasn't changed over the last K. Yeah, she just gets in a rhythm, and that's just a rhythm that no one can match. Yeah, we've seen that over both on the track and on the course. She just has another gear that she can hold on seemingly for infinity. We did see her sneak another little look over the shoulder there, right when Chris was talking. She's, this is the second time. Every time we ask Chris, how's she doing? She seems to sneak a peek um, over her shoulder. So I think she's definitely aware of the girls behind her, and she's, you know, she doesn't want to um, be overconfident or make any mistakes, so she's keeping an eye out. As strong as she is, I think she is a little bit surprised as she looks back and she sees yeah. girls not too far behind. Yeah, Taylor is having a great run today. Taylor Ewart now uh, making her move as she is grabbing a hold of second place ahead of Torvaldson. And we saw Starlopper, I believe she was in fourth. She actually looked the best among those in, in that chase pack, physically the best one among those. We saw from California, Carly Doroskar now moving also to the top six, moving up on those on that chase pack. Do we set the course record a year ago, 1637, as you see at the two mile mark, Kinetic with the lead as Niwad has made a strong move up into second, Central Oregon holding on in third position and Manlius falling from second to fourth, again at the two mile mark. We just saw a few seconds ago, we saw that Caitlin came up on a large puddle and she went around it to make sure that there was no unsure footing that can cost her significant time if she takes a spill. So very wide, very smart, and but still obviously also very, 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 very focused coming in. She knows this is uh, probably the best challenge she's ever had to face against high schoolers, and she's holding together very well. Now taking a command of this race here in the latter stages after going in a much more conservative fashion in this 2019 edition. But as you can see now, center of picture still wow. a couple of people in chase mode along with Torvaldson. That's Taylor Ewart, who is in second. This is a great testament right here, just for the quality of the field. Look at that, the movement coming up right now with about less than 800 meters to go coming in. And Thorvaldson now going to make a move and challenge again for second. You can see not much strong turf underneath them as they make that turn. And as you mentioned, when it came to the puddles, it was staying out of the way. And now that's the same approach that 
Caitlin Tui is taking with the mud puddles as well. Chris, anything else before we get to the finish? Well, I'm done trying to predict what's going to happen because every time I open my <laughs> mouth, I jinx it. But it has been an absolute battle here the last K. Around that corner, coming by the finish line, uh, Caitlin looked back. She saw how close they were. I think she was really surprised. You started to see the arms go a little higher. She's been working really hard, but the, the two behind her are not fresh either. Frankly, I have no idea what's going to happen, but it has been an absolute war out here, and it has just been an honor and a privilege to watch. It's so hard, I feel like at this point, they're trying to gun, they're trying to give it their last bit, but at the same time, the worst thing that could happen right now would be to go too hard, to change your stride and slip and fall, and then it's game over. So I feel like that's just a really hard, um, you know, line to just, I want to push it, but I also don't want to go too far and end up <laughs> on my face. <laughs> but these girls in the chase back, they're not defensive at all whatsoever. We see the great duel right now, four second. Taylor Ewart as well as Steve Thorvaldson coming up and trying to go ahead and keep Caitlin in, in view here. And Torvaldson is now making another move oh. as they will now battle up, closing in on those last two rises of the hill. She is now taking control of hey, second job, position and trying to make that strong move. And you can see that Ewart started wow. to look behind as now wow. we wow. have a race coming into the final stretches of this race. This Caitlin is Tui. not over. I don't know if it was that angle, but Caitlin Tui looks exhausted. Oh, she, look at that. They reeled She's her in. They've had over. reeled her in. It's is gonna this come possible? right down to the finish. I think we Three might see people something. In it. No one ever would have thought would have happened right now. <laughs> well, Caitlin Tui trying to find a Holy gear to hold cow. off the rest of the field. It's close. Oh, wow, look at this. They're coming right in tight. <laughs> Caitlin Tui trying to win a third consecutive Nike Cross National title. They're making her work for it. She's going to do it. She's going to keep that footing all the way through. Peak. Caitlin Tui. Caitlin second. Caitlin Tui, a three-time Nike Cross wow. Nationals champion winning by less than a second Woo. over Taylor Ewart. And Sydney Thorvaldson will finish in third. A second wow. between places one, two, and three. Taylor and Sydney really made her work for it and made an exciting race out there today. Wow, that was incredible. Now we just get to watch the carnage as they come in, <laughs> toppling over one another. I think you enjoy that too I much. I love this part. It's so funny. I did the same thing at, at the regional meet. There's puke, there's spit. It's just <laughs> disgusting and hilarious. And now about a minute behind the leaders, now we see really the, uh, the team battle begin to play out right here. Yeah, this is where the team victory um, is made right here. You have your maybe you have your top gun, your low stick, but then really, really matters where you know three, four, five finish. And look at this, right around 1845, about 10 seconds from now, we're going to see a big, big group crossing through of team scorers. I love to see this. I've I've seen a, a couple now um, athletes from different schools helping. Um, competitors get out of the way if they're you know struggling once they cross the finish line someone from a different school putting an arm around them lifting them up and kind of carry them um, to the side it's really a, a cool um, camaraderie thing uh, as a good sportsman you, that you see out here with cross-country runners well the line they always use for this event is finish on empty and I think for a lot of these young women it's the uh, realization as they come across the line that a very long but very successful cross country season has come to an end in these rainy and cold conditions at Glendevere. The team title still up for grabs as we keep watching for those fourth and fifth runners from the respective top teams again kinetic was leading through the two mile mark. We'll await official results here when we have the final results scored from the timers and then bring the top three individual finish finishers and the top three teams to the stage for trophy presentations. But nearing now 20 minutes in, still waiting for those last runners to come across the line here at Nike Cross National.
But as we get a great shot here of the finish line and folks regrouping. A lot of muddy, <laughs> sweaty, wet hugs going on out there. We see Chris Derrick there in the masses. We'll get him shortly for a few interviews as we await the official results. You can see literally the steam coming off of these athletes. It's <laughs> incredible. They're, they're warm from, from running. I'm not thinking about hopping in that community race just to warm up here. It's the worst just standing. It's much, <laughs> much warmer when you're running around. One of the things to watch, uh, we mentioned at the, at the mile mark, we had a couple of the New York teams on the very top of the standings, and you had mentioned in speaking with the Cranics, the coaching Cranics, coming into the weekend, they said that they're more of a reserve team until the latter half of the race. So yeah. we'll see if they were able to execute that as well today or not. It can be tough to do, like I said before, the adrenaline of being at nationals and mm -hmm. stuff. Sometimes you get out quicker than you mean to just because of all the excitement, the gun goes off, you get caught up in caught up in all that. Um, and then, you know, it's just a matter of can you hold on to that throughout the whole, you know, race and, and still finish strong or do you end up fading? You know, oftentimes in past years at this scene right here, we see, in all honesty, a lot of kids that sometimes are pretty heartbroken with how they did. Mm. We're not seeing that this year. I think these kids are coming away feeling really good that they did put it all out there. They did finish on empty. At least a lot of great team camaraderie and support right now. I think also just with the conditions, you know, you do the best you can. You do everything you can. You cross the finish line, you're like, well, you know, I gave it my all, and what happens, happens. You kind of mm -hmm. have to just learn to let go of the result a little bit and just be happy with the effort that you gave, knowing that you wouldn't have done anything different. It was just what you had on the day. Right, definitely, definitely. We saw a lot of courageous performances, big moves, big risks taken on in that lead pack, in that chase pack early on. Well, I'm talking about courageous performances. Chris Derrick survives. <laughs> is right around the course in the Gator, and he's now celebrating at the finish line. 